This might look like a bamboo forest, but what you're actually seeing is one of the most notorious invasive plants in the world, Japanese knotweed. And this isn't just a small patch. It goes on and on. I've been walking through it for minutes now, and I'm still completely surrounded. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of comments online brushing this plant off, saying it's not a big deal, just mow it, or that people only fear it because contractors want to make money. But let me show you what it actually looks like when this plant takes hold. Everything underfoot is not weed. There are no native wildflowers here. No saplings coming up. No ground cover. It's a green desert. And up above, the thick canopy it forms blocks out the light, preventing anything else from growing. This patch is nearly a monoculture. I get it. It's just a plant, right? How bad can it be? But this isn't about fear-mongering. This is about recognizing the very real, long-term damage this species causes when left unchecked. It's not just surviving here, it's winning. Some folks point to Japan and say, well, it grows there and they're fine. And that's true. But Japan also has natural predators, pathogens, and grazing pressure to keep it in balance. Over here, it's growing in the absence of those checks. That's what makes it invasive. Not where it comes from, but what it does. Others say, just mow it down. But if you don't do it properly, and I mean really carefully, you're more likely to spread it than control it. A single fragment of rhizome can start a whole new colony. Some infestations have even started when someone dumped a bit of soil with knotweed roots in it. Now yes, Japanese knotweed is edible, especially in the spring when the young shoots are tender. It's sometimes compared to rhubarb and used in jams or even baked goods. But harvesting it doesn't come close to stopping it. In fact, cutting it improperly can make the problem worse by encouraging it to spread underground. So while I think foraging can be a great way to connect with nature, I wouldn't rely on eating knotweed as a solution for managing it. Before I wrap up, I want to stress something important. Check your local regulations when it comes to Japanese knotweed. Some areas, especially those not fully infested yet, actually ask residents to report sightings so they can contain it early. And control methods vary a lot depending on where you live. In some places, you're required to dispose of the plant in specific ways. Cutting it and tossing it in the compost or brush pile might actually make things worse. So please, if you spot it, take a moment to look up what your town or state recommends. A little local knowledge can go a long way when dealing with a plant this persistent. I'm not trying to scare anyone. But I do think it's worth understanding why people are concerned and why I take the time to document things like this. This patch is already lost, but learning from it might help us save the next one. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, get out there and see what you can see.